बंग में मनसे प्रतिष्ठित मनु में बाचे प्रतिष्ठित अभीरबीर्मयधि वेद सामनेस्थ श्रुत म्याम पुराशरण दिन और समदा ऋतम वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मत तद्भक्तामत अवतुव अब तो वक्ता ओम शांति 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 पीस मंत्र फ्रॉम द रिग वेद मे माई स्पीच बी वन विद माई माइंड एंड मे माई माइंड बी वन विद माई स्पीच ओ दाउ सेल्फ टू मीन ब्राह्मण रिमूव द भील ऑफ इग्नोरेंस फ्रॉम बिफोर मी दट आई मे बी होल्ड द लाइट Do thou reveal to me the spirit of the scriptures? May the truth of the scriptures be ever present to me. May I seek day and night to realize what I learn from the sages. May may I speak the truth of Brahman. May it protect me. May it protect my teacher. Home, peace, peace, peace be in God. This morning, our subject is stories of Vedanta monks, part thirteen. As you know, we started this series of lecture based on the diaries and my interviews with many old monks of the Ramakrishna order. I prepared a book in two volumes. It is in Bengali, Prachin Shadu Der Kotha, stories of the old monks. As I told you in previous talk, that Sri Ramakrishna is the founder of our organization, and then came his disciples, sixteen disciples. that is the second generation then his disciples their disciples that is the third second generation and we are the third generation so how to taught taught with a religion it comes from guru to disciple it comes through the lineage if you read the upanishads you will see the how guru transmit the knowledge wisdom to the disciple then that disciple next disciple in this way thousands of years they brought this spiritual tradition it is extremely important to know this tradition so i try to collect those things many if i sometimes say vedanta monks are very mysterious believe in one sense some are very predictable and some are extremely unpredictable we see shami sharudananda a disciple of sri ramakrishna came to america taught vedanta extremely predictable very organized and another disciple shami adbhutananda latu maharaj is extremely unpredictable but both are nor sa brahman both no god that is one thing second some are extremely intellectual but not deeply spiritual some are extremely spiritual but not very intellectual some are so spiritual they are like a spiritual dynamo if you sit near them you are you will not have to need practice meditation your mind will automatically will go up but not very learned others they can coach scriptures they can write books powerful orators but not deeply spiritual some are tremendously active great workers 
build temples, build hospitals, build educational institutions, but not very contemplative. Others we see extremely contemplative, but not very active. And some are both. That we find in Swami Vivekananda. All four yogas equally, he was adept of all four yogas. Swami Vivekananda brought Vedanta to America in 1893. So he represented Hinduism at the Parliament of Religions in Chicago. Anyhow, Swamiji is a jnani, a tremendous worker, a great devotee, and a great yogi. Do you know what is the secret of the spiritual life? You have seen Ringling Brothers Harkas for us. There's the mono, one wheel, sometimes some jokers come, you know, paddling on one wheel. It needs a tremendous balance to paddle one wheel, cycle. Bicycle also, you see, I see sometimes people go in front of us, bicycle, two wheels, it needs balancing. Then rickshaw. Three, three wheel cycle. It does not need too much balancing, but it does not give you speed. <coughs> but your four wheel cars, boom, go, speed. So if your car uh, with four wheels, you will find you can give tremendous speed. Same thing, if you practice four yogas, your life will be very smooth and very balanced. You are active, you are meditative, you are deeply emotional, devotional, and at the same time, your great intellect. You see, intellect is very, very vital in human life. Do you know what do they say? Human being minus intellect is animal. Human beings with non-functioning intellect is just like animal man. Human beings with functioning intellect is a human being. You are a human being, you have intellect. Do you know what this means? You are the only person who can discriminate what is right, what is wrong. Animals cannot do that. The power of discrimination come in intellect, buddhi. So, human beings with functional intellect that we are now <laughs> is very rational. And human beings with enlightened intellect is a saint, illumined intellect. They are saints. Very interesting how this intellect differentiates between man and animal. You eat, they eat. You sleep, they sleep. You procreate children, they procreate children. There is no difference between man and animal. Only in one respect, you can practice dharma. You can practice knowledge. You can have, disc you have discrimination. In that respect, human beings are different from animals. Very interesting. <laughs> I was talking about Swami Brahmananda, my guru's guru, who was a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. He was deeply spiritual, and he was the president of our order but he was reluctant to attend any board meeting. He would ask Swami Sharadananda, who was the general secretary, you, you please manage it, I don't need to go there. Oh, no, no, Swami, it is a very important um, meeting. We need your decision, please come. So he went there and just closed his eyes and meditating, and this discussion was going on in the trustee meeting. He only listened. And then he said, 
Maharaj, what, 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 what shall you do? Do this. Just one sentence, and that is the solution. Because these people, they have tremendous spiritual power. They can see the past, present, and future. They can read your minds. And they can see the antidote of the problem. It is, they are amazing people, I tell you. So these disciples, he said, that is the Swami Sharadananda once made a remark. If I tell something, he was a general secretary. Please argue with me, because I am not in the field. And if Swami Brahmananda says anything, says anything, do not argue. Because his mind is connected with Sri Ramakrishna. He can tell you only the truth. Do not argue with that person. And just do it. Because he can see your past, present, and future. I'm just telling you that in the order I belong, how these monks deal with our problems and solve the problems. Amazing, these people. I was, Shami Sridharanandaji told me a story. Once the, the, there was a meeting and there was a difference of opinion among the trustees. So they came to the president, Maharaj, what is the solution? Come tomorrow in my room. Then he said, you tell your opinion, you tell your opinion. Everybody, he invited, tell me what is the solution of this opinion. So everybody talked. I have listened to what you said, but let me tell you one thing. <coughs> Every one of you expressed your opinion based on your understanding. There is a little ego. That is the reason this friction is coming. All problems in your home, family life, all remember, it is a friction of ego. You think I'm doing, I, I'm, my path is the more important path? She says that my path is the important path. This is the friction. <laughs> so tomorrow there will be another meeting. Today, you deeply think about the good of this organization. Forget your ego. Just think about the welfare, the, 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 the goal and the good for this order. Then come tomorrow, another meeting. Next day, they found it was unanimous. You know, all the problems come due to this, this tiny Petty ego. That is the way it works. Some people rule the order or organization through politics, some through morality and ethics, some through spirituality. Swami Brahmananda ruled through spirituality and love. Love. If I love you, I can force you to do it. Children, they love their parents. My mom, you have to buy these things for me. Mom was forced to buy that things for the children. It is the love which forces us to do many things so smoothly. That we learn, he said, that one Swami major remark, you know, there are various kinds of politics. Newspaper politics, oh, what president is doing, there's a right, wrong, you know, we shout, I know. Then, <laughs> devotees politics, oh, my guru is greater than your guru, and you will think you are, my guru is better than your guru. Uh, who is doing what, he is a great devotee. And in this way, you know, ashram politics, <laughs> devotee politics. I remember one devotee was a devotee, you know, Disciple of Swami Prabhupada. He came here and our devotee, I shall not mention her name, she is also a staunch devotee of Shat Prakashananda. So she said, My guru is the greatest. And she said, My guru is the greatest. <laughs> then there is a big debate. So I said, You know, Swami Shat Prakashananda went to Swami Shivananda for a solution. He asked that great Swami, some people 
get initiation from Brahmananda and some from Holy Mother. Is there any difference? Swami said, no. Same Ganges water okay, is coming through two different faucets. Your home, what kind of water do you take? Mississippi River water? Mine too. Same water is coming in your home, my home, everybody's home here. Mississippi River's water goes to every house in St. Louis City. So your water, my water are not different, same water. So the Swami says, same Ramakrishna's power comes, is coming through one faucet, Brahmananda, Holy Mother, and another disciple. No difference. So why are you fighting? Do not fight. <laughs> Very good solution. <coughs> of course, ashrama politics, I told Swami Virajan on the mention that he solved that, you know, we really have sacrificed everything to serve Sri Ramakrishna. Why should we fight? Why should you quarrel? It's all quarrel only remember. It comes from ego. Human life is very precious. We are in this world in a very short period. I call it a vacation village. In Laguna Beach, there is a hotel there. It's called Vacation Village. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a vacation village, holiday inn. <laughs> Very short time we are here. Goal? In the goal of human life is to realize God. Money, these, that, that is not the goal. So when we discuss the, the lives of these great shadows, monks, we see their focus toward God. You see beauty, youth, money, they fly away. So we must learn from these monks and their lives. You see, this one thing I noticed about these swamis, if something, everything is not in the book, some you will have to learn from these monks, their day to day life. If you observe, if you live with them, then you know what type of person they are. I started this, the last two lectures I gave on the monks in Banaras. So I shall start with Shami Raghubarananda, who was born in 1895, died in 1983. Benares, 2nd October 1977. I met Shami Raghu Ram Prashad Maharaj. He was a tapushi shadu. Tapushi means a person who practices austerity, meditation, and very, very independent, very Rigid life, only God and God alone, that kind of feeling. So whenever I used to go to India, I came to this country in 1971. So first time I reached, I was in Hollywood for seven years. Then I went to India to visit, and I knew these monks, and I used to go to their rooms and interview them and record them on my tape recorder. I have a little American nature, you know, <laughs> very, <laughs> to know, you know, <laughs> and be student's nature. So I asked some questions, and I wanted to know their life's experience. Suppose you have no work, you are not in the working field. How do you spend your time? That is, I wanted to learn from these monks. When you will be old, you cannot function. How will you function? That happened. Swami Nikhilananda, Swami Sharadananda, Swami Nikhilananda, hello, young man, that Swami who translated the Gospel of Ramakrishna. How will you 
spend your days in old age. Oh, Swami, I'm a very active person. I love to work. Listen, work depends upon your good health and your power of adjustment with others. Perhaps your health is bad, you are invalid. How will you spend your days? Study. Your eyes are good, at least you can get some intellectual food. Physically, you cannot do anything, but intellectual food you can get. Suppose you are physically invalid, you are blind. How will you spend your days? Learn how to meditate so that you can pass your days in meditation. You see, this is the way these disciples trained them. How will you spend your days? I remember I went to see an old lady. I shall not say old, elderly legends <laughs> in, 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 in Los Angeles in a nursing home. She was complaining for potato salad. Oh, nobody gave me potato salad. Oh, I, so I came to, to Hollywood. At the time, I was in Hollywood. I told the convent nuns, please make some potato salad and feed that old lady, elderly lady, so that she can fulfill her desire that she had potato salad. Otherwise, your mind will be on potato salad, not on God. <laughs> How will you spend your days? So, <clears throat> on 22nd December, 1978, he wrote a letter to me from Benares, and he told his life story. Well, I joined the order in 1917 when I was 22 years old. Swami Brahmananda gave me the Brahma Church of Havana next year. Then I got my mantra from Swami Shivananda and Sannyas in 1928 from Swami Shivananda. Then I had a deep problem. My mother. She, I am the only son. And I could not be a monk. They would not accept me. Go and serve your mother. So do you know what happened? That Swami in Banaras told me that bring your mother and we have a women's retirement home so she will be there and you join. So my, I was so happy that my mother got a place to stay, you know. The monastery will take care of her and I joined. And then uh, he was the head of the Ramakrishna Mission Konkal for many years. Then in 1954, he retired. Two years he was in Dehradun, Barlogans, served an American monk, Atulananda. Then nine years, till 1965, he was in Uttar Kashi and Rishikesh, practicing austerity, begging food, alms, and living only on God. Then I decided to come to Benares. I came here in 1965. And he told, wrote me, and till death he was there till 1983. So in 1982, when I went to his room, do you know what did I see? First, uh, first let me tell you the story. Uncle Maharaj, will you be my guide? I want to see a place where Swami Vivekananda stayed for two months in 1902, Gopalal Villa in Banaras. He said, yes, yes, I shall take you there. So I went to Pramodadas Mitra's house. There also Swamiji stayed. He was a very rich man. So the Swami, I have a car, I rented a car. So I went there and saw that school. Now that place is a school, but they kept some pictures of Vivekananda in that place. So I still remember him very well. Then I, I, one day I went to his room. I see what does he do. Do you know what he was doing? He was making guava jam. In Banaras, guava is very big and very soft and very juicy and very full of fragrance. Banaras guava is the best guava in India. So he brought some guava and making some jam, jam and jelly. I said, Maharaj, why are you making this guava jam? You know, 
that word is called number 10. All the retired monks live there. So from the hospital, there's a big kitchen. Food comes three times a day. And he was one of the persons in that number 10 word. And he was making jam. He was telling me, you know, these monks eat same food, you know, hospital food, very bland. So I am making some jam and jelly so that they can make eat with chapatis and get some taste in their mouth. I was thinking, this old monk in his late ages, feeling, feeling for this people, for others. Then he tell, do you like to taste my jam? And of course. So he put in, did you, do you know thin arrowroot biscuit? It's just round, thin. And he put a little jam there and put another and gave a sandwich, but now eat. So I ate that, jam, that thinner root biscuit jam, and Maharaj, it is very tasty. That is the way I understood religion. Do you know how hard is true religion? Do you feel for others? Always remember, Christ said, love thy Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy speech. That is for you. The next commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. That is for others. Love thy neighbors. So if that your religion, you are not blossomed, if you do not have feel for others. And the other is, I want own my, my own liberation. That means you are selfish. Selfish. No good. So I learned. Then I wrote a letter in 1978 from St. Louis. Maharaj, could you talk to me about Purusharan? Purusharan means a, a special technique of repeating mantra. Do you know how does it go? It goes for 14 days, a week, fortnight. Today 1,000, next day 2,000, next day 3,000. In this way, you go to 14,000 in the ascending order. Then again, 14,000, 13,000, 12,000, 10,000 in the descending order. That is the way they repeat mantra. So he wrote all those things to me, how to, you see, these people practice religion. So they know various intricacies and the, and the inner meaning of those kinds of spiritual practices. Then I met another Swami. Swami Dharmesh Anandu. He died in 1994. 1982, I went to Banaras. And I interviewed a few Swamis and recorded them in my cassette tape recorder. 19th August 1982, I went to Swami Dharmesh Anandu's room and recorded this conversation. This Swami was very close to M the recorder of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And I read his articles, Srimo Swamipe, living with him. So I asked, could you tell me something about him? He was very happy. He said, I went to him in 1921-22. I was a college student, and I used to go to Brahmo Samaj, the socio-religious organization in India. So one of my friends gave me a copy of Gospel of Ramakrishna, part four in Bengali. Gospel of Ramakrishna in Bengali, five volumes. So the fourth volume I read, and I was so happy and excited. Then my friend said, the person who recorded this gospel is still alive. Do you like to go and see him? But of course I love to see him. <clears throat> so he went to him. And it was just after the car festival. Generally, it falls in June, July. So the, some prasad came from Puri, the place of Krishna, Jagannath. It is a very famous temple in Odisha, on the coast of Bay of Bengal. So they brought some dry prasad. Let me explain what is dry prasad. 
they generally offer rice and vegetables, various kinds of food to the Lord, and those foods are sold in the market. That is called Ananda Bajar. So, and these rice which are not sold, they dry them, and they make it in a package, and then they sell it. Because they believe that if you take that rice, you will get devotion. So, M. Sri Ramakrishna used to take the dry rice every morning, and M. also used to take. So, when this fresh prasad arrived from Puri to Calcutta, he was distributing among his devotees. And this young man says, I don't believe that taking this rice one can get devotion, because he wants to, you know, young man, college student, Brahmo, he, <laughs> he was thinking, what is this? It's superstition, you know. <laughs> Swami Vivekananda had the same problem. Sri Ramakrishna said to Drupa Gunmanish, do you know the effect of the food in on human system? Some food may be constipative, some food may be laxative. Some food is very acidic, some people, some food very alkalic. Do you believe these things? Oh yes, yes, it is science. It is science, that I believe it. Swami Sri Ramakrishna said this is also science. It is a spiritual science. <laughs> it is not material science. This is spiritual science says if you take prasad, you will get devotion. Anyhow, this boy, this Dharmeshananda, his name was Dhiran. He says, I don't believe that. He was very upset. Knowingly, unknowingly, if you take poison, you will die. Do you believe it? If you take potassium cyanide with knowing or without knowing, you will die. So same thing, this prasad, knowingly, unknowingly, if you take, you will get devotion. That was M's argument. <laughs> <laughs> then he became very grave. And you know, in his congregation, many people are seated. Hello, gentlemen, do you know this young man says he is contradicting Sri Ramakrishna? Sri Ramakrishna says if anybody takes prasad, will get devotion. But this young man doesn't believe it. Hello, do you know this young man says this? Hello, young man, says, in this way, he embarrassed him. <laughs> and then he was, his friend was looking at him. All right, sir, please give you a prasad. So he took prasad. Then Swami told me, I, I recorded it from my tape. In 1921, I met Swami Brahmananda in Belurmat. And then I, in 19, I was then a college student. And I was staying in Vivekananda Society, which was established by Nivedita after Swamiji's passing away. So I asked him, what do you do in the Vivekananda Society? Well, I do the worship, and I take care of the library. That is a good job. When you make the sandal paste, when you make the garland, think that you are doing all these things for Sri Ramakrishna. Then he asked his friend, what do you do? I raise, I collect some subscription money from the people and I arranged the lectures. So, all right, CM kept quiet, but he appreciated his work. Then he decided, I want to be a monk. He went to M. M said, you really want to be a monk? I said, yes. If you really want to be a monk, you should visit a cremation ground every day. There you will see the funeral pyre, how human body the end of human body, how it goes, you know. That is the way you will get renunciation. So he went few days and he had to report to him. So one day he did not go. He said, you did not go today? No. Um, but I heard my neighbor, somebody died and somebody was crying. Well, that is also all right. <laughs> Then he said, I left Calcutta and joined in Devghar in Bihar, 
in the monastery. I was there for four years, but my health was not very good there, so I came to Belludmot, and Swami Shivananda sent me to Benares. And at that time, there was a Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela means every 12 years, or sometimes every six years, they have a, all monks join in one place. Sometimes they call it either Hordwar or Ujjain or Prague, Allahabad. There are some four places in India they do this big function. All monks go there one month. There is a huge gathering. So he went there and attended this function and wrote to M. M was very pleased. He was loved to hear about the monks and their lives. Because he had a desire to become a monk, but Sri Ramakrishna said, no, 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 you have wife and children. You'll be, a, you'll be an ideal householder, no monk. So inside, he, his desire to be a monk. So he always loved to hear about the monks. Then he went to Almora, and he wrote a letter, and M wrote him back. I am glad that you are in the Himalayas and thinking of, of God day and night. What a wonderful environment. I feel that in this old age I shall go there and just practice tapasya. Tapasya chiyate brahmu. When you meditate on Brahman, you know your heart will expand. But you live alone. Be careful. Living alone is not so easy, I tell you frankly. If you do not have good spiritual background, your mind will go to the other direction. Mind goes two ways, either world or God. Then he told me that you, somebody, you see, some people read the scriptures, but they do not know how to put that scriptures in their lives. Then he quoted that, you know, Swami Turiyananda, how he experimented Bhagavad Gita in his life. The teachings he experimented and verified, just like a science, and got the result. So he said, memorize this verse, Goti Varta Prabhu Sakshi <clears throat> Nibhasa Saranam Surit Prabhava Pralaya Sthanam Nidhanam Bijam Abhayam. Verse, chapter 9, verse 18. Goti, Krishna is telling Arjuna, I am the Goti, I am the goal of human life. Christ says, I am the goal, I am the way, I am the truth. Krishna also said the same thing. Bharta, I support all beings. I am the Prabhu, I am the Lord, I am the witness, I am the abode. I am the, I am the refuge, I am the friend, I am the origin, and I am the dissolution. I am the eternal siege, and I am the substratum of all this universe. Meditate on it. He was talking about how to meditate on the scripture. Swami told me that when I was in Almora, I used to repeat ninth and tenth chapter of the Gita every day because those two chapters are full of devotion. And I used to pray to the Master. Then, do you know what? I felt very lonely in Almora because still Sri Ramakrishna's disciples are alive and I am not having their company, I am living alone. So I wanted to come back. So I came to Banaras, I got a letter from the General Secretary, Swami Virajananda, that you please come soon in Calcutta, Udbodhan. We have a magazine there. And you will have to be the sub-editor of that magazine. Well, I was excited having that assignment I came to Calcutta because then I will be able to visit him quickly, very many times, you see. It is very close to M's house, the Udbodhan. 
So I visited him. I came to Calcutta. And I went and saw him seated on his cot. I'm glad that you have come back. Let me tell you a secret about the spiritual life. Learn how to pray. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrittur ma amritam gamaya. Lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality. Pray. Listen. Pray. Prayer is the conversation, it's a dialogue between God and man. Just open your heart to God. He will not deceive you. He will not cheat you. It will lighten your heaviness of your heart. Learn how to pray. He was emphasizing on prayer. <clears throat> prayer is the golden link between the short life and eternal life. We will have to give this short life to God. When you pray, grace will come. Aim was very fond of me. He used to tell many things about Sri Ramakrishna. And do you know what? He, he used to live in the attic room of his school. He has a school. The fourth floor. I went there and took pictures of Aim's room and everything. And the roof, the wall of the roof is very high so that you cannot see the neighbor. And inside, very, very flower tops and like garden. He created like a forest, as in ancient time, the rishis, the sages of the Upanishads lived. So he created that kind of atmosphere in the, in the heart of Calcutta city. And there he used to meditate. And many people, after their job, in the afternoon, in the evening, they used to come to him and just stay till 10 o'clock. And him only would talk about God. And he had those, his diaries, which he wrote, based on the diary game, the Gospel of Ramakrishna, he would open the diary and talk about Sri Ramakrishna to these people and uplifted them. One day, I went at 2, two o'clock, 2 a.m. I forgot my asana, my carpet, so I went to get it. He said, hello, I was just thinking of you. Please come. Um, but but um, he says, I cannot stay. I will have to go. Because Swami Vasudevananda will give a class on the Chandugu Upanishad. I will have to attend that class. He says, studying the scriptures to go to the following the path of God, that is the royal path. All these years, all through the ages, people are doing it. But let me tell you, hold on Sri Ramakrishna. Class is not the main thing. Sri Ramakrishna just came. Here everything is fresh. This is the golden opportunity to reach God very quickly. He is God himself. All Vedas and Vedanta, all are at his feet. He can give you knowledge right now. You will reach your destination very soon. Otherwise, it will be too late, too late, too late, if you only go through the scriptures. Young man, listen. But I had tremendous desire for learning the scriptures, so I said, James, I'm sorry, I must go. Then I lamented. Perhaps he wanted to tell some secret of his spiritual life to me. I was young, so I could not understand. One day I said, you know, Mahavi, I practice Japa mind meditation, but I cannot go deep. Could you tell me why? Do you know why? You have desire to be a learned person. You are studying the scriptures. You will stay in the intellectual plane. I have, some, some, I have seen some swamis, highly intellectual, but could not go in, within. Whole secret is the kingdom of heaven is within you. How to reach there? Otherwise, you will, you will get joy in intellectual joy, but not that spiritual joy. 
Intellectual joy comes and goes. Physical joy comes and goes. But spiritual joy, everlasting. That experience will stay with you forever. That is our goal. So I asked him, please do something for me. Him said, pray. Prayer is the good thing. Another thing I tell you, young man, listen. Talk about God. That way you will get satisfaction by yourself and you will, you will satisfy others. Parasparam bhabayanta shriyu param abhavshata you will attain the supreme by understanding this truth. This is from the Gita. You follow the teachings of the Gita. Talk about God with the devotees. Then you will get devotion, and they will also get devotion. Aim was a great, my great well-wisher. Do you know, one day in the monastery, I had a fight with another monk, so I was very much upset. I went to him for consolation. Him seeing me, oh, you have come, 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 come. So he was reading a paper and says, look, if somebody says that something comment about Belurmat, that some tiger has fallen in Belurmat. And he was laughing so loudly. But seeing his laugh, I also laughed. So all my complaints disappeared. <laughs> Then one day I went to him and said, I don't believe that Sri Ramakrishna is God. He said, my goodness, you are close connected with these Sri Ramakrishna's disciples and myself and John, and you have this kind of understanding. What is this? You read the whole Ramayana and now you stay asking me, she, whose aunt is Sita? Chat Kanjo Ramayan Pure Shitakar Mashi. Shita is an ant of this person that you are telling me. Shame on you. <laughs> Let me tell you my experience. Most probably it was in 1882 or 1883. I went to the Oxinishwar. Sri Ramakrishna was resting after lunch on his bed. I was seated on his doormat and I was caressing his feet. And I was thinking, here is a man, he eats, he sleeps, he talks, he walks. How can he be God? Immediately, Sri Ramakrishna got up. Hey, master, to me, keep up so. He was the master, means he was the school teacher. We call it the school teacher, the master. Hey, master, what are you thinking? Everything is within here. If you think of this, you will achieve everything. If you think of me, you will achieve everything. You will think of me, you will achieve everything. Three times he repeated. Then, boom, went into Shamali. Then he came back again from Shamali. And he was talking to the Divine Mother. Mother, did I say this? Mother, I do not know anything. You, you spoke through me. I am, a, I am your child. Mother, did I make a mistake? You spoke these words through my mouth. But at that day, I realized that Sri Ramakrishna was God. One thing I noticed, Sri Ramakrishna had the aim was State first love for truth. Somebody said, I shall come and see you, and that person did not come. He was so upset. Ish. He deviated from the truth. You know, I sometimes ask people, if you give words, you must keep it. That will enhance the integrity of your character. Always keep your words. And if you cannot keep, give a phone call. Phone. Tell that this is the reason I could not make it. Always adhere, follow the truth. Well, Sri Ramakrishna taught us. 
Em's life was very austere. He used to cook his own food, <laughs> though his wife and family were there, was there. Um, at night time, he used to eat some bread and milk. And day time, he used to make his food in a cooker, a pressure cooker, rice, uh, some dolls, and some vegetables. <laughs> One night he had no food, so he was telling, you know, I am not well today. I do not have bread at home either. So let me go and bring a bread for you, sir. It was 10 o'clock at night. Most of all big shops are closed. So I went to a tea shop and bought a piece of loaf, milk roll, they call it. So I brought it for him. He put it in his, he sprinkled the Ganges water on it. And then he ate with his milk. He always asked the monks, always be independent. Don't depend on the, on the rich people and others. So Swami Bishananda came from Bombay with a very rich merchant. And when to introduce him, because he was a recorder of the gospel of Ramakrishna. So when that gentleman left, Swami called the Vishananda. Look, if the householders follow the devotees, that is good. A devotee, the household, the monk should not follow the devotees. You, for money, you are following this rich man, you will lose shraddha, faith. He was thinking that you are only following me for my money. You will lose your freedom. In this way, he instructed him, please don't depend on God. Don't depend on human beings. Then um, he was not well. Then Swami suggested that why don't you come into Belunmat and just stay in the monastery. The monks will serve you. My goodness, I have to take service from the monks? No way. Monks are great. They renounce everything for God. I am a householder. In this way, um, you say, I cannot take service from a monk. Then he says, the Christ, he used to tell many parables of, Siram, of Christ. You see, he was the authority of the Bible. <laughs> when the, some ministers used to ask, you know, the way you talk about Bible, even we do not know. Because he say, we would reply, because we lived with Christ. Sri Ramakrishna was Christ. A good shepherd goes to search for a sheep gone astray. He told three parables, I remember, I just read it this morning, that one sheep was lost and the good shepherd located, got this lost sheep and brought back in the fold and says, I am the best good shepherd. That parable he told, it is in the Matthew, I think. Then in the John, some, he talked about the pearls, about the pearls, that a person sold his, all his property and bought one pearl that is very precious. So he said, that pearl is devotion. Sell everything and then follow me, as Christ said. And then this devotion is the only thing needful in his spiritual life. That parable he said. Another parable he mentioned, birthright. Never give up birthright. It is in the, mm, in the Genesis chapter of the Old Testament and in the Hebrew chapter of the St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, there also Christ mentioned, never give up your birthright. Because the two brothers are going, one brother lost, had no food in the desert, and he asked the eldest brother, could you give me the food? Jacob. Jacob said, I can give you food, but you will have to give your birthright, your all property, everything to me. And he said, if I die, who will enjoy my property? Let me give my birthright to you. That Christ, that M did not like. Die doesn't matter, but don't give up your birthright. That is spirituality. The way he used to emphasize these stories of the Bible is amazing. He would put new light on the Bible. 
So I, Swami says, Aim was really a sage, of ancient sage. He used to live in the modern institution, and in the evening, people would come. Sometimes he would check his, his hair of his hand. If it is visible, that means it is not yet evening. If it is not visible, no watch. Aim, Ramakrishna used to ascertain the evening through that way, whether I can see my hair or not. So if you cannot see your hair, that means it is evening. That is the time for meditation. So he, he, was, he used to check his own hair and, and meditate with the devotees. And he said, Onna vacha vimunchata amritasya esha shaitu. Don't talk any worldly things. Only talk only about God. So he, the Swami said, I met other disciples of Sri Ramakrishna also. I went to Shami Abhedananda and asked Maharaj, I am going to Puri for pilgrimage. Will you bless me so that I may get devotion? Swami said, if you travel too much, you will not get devotion. Stay in one place and concentrate and pray to God. Then you will get devotion. Then I went to Sargachi. Swami writes, which told me, and I became sick. I had high temperature. Swami Akhanjananda, another disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, told me, you know, treat your disease like a guest. You have come to my house three days. Now you go. <laughs> Never <laughs> entertain the guest more than three days. <laughs> In America also they say, you know, the fish smells after three days. <laughs> A guest, you know, all good things, so three days, that is enough. <laughs> well, I get out from this body, <laughs> the disease. Matras parshas de kunti or sitoshna sukudukkada agama pai nonitta tang stitiksha sabharata. Swami Akhanjananda told me, the happiness and misery, do you know how do they come? It comes from the contact of the senses and the sense objects. If favorable, you are happy. If it is unfavorable, you are unhappy. That is the way happiness and misery work in this world. They come and agama, apa, you know, they come and go. Happiness, oh. <laughs> have you seen a person all the time happy? No. Or all the time miserable? No. They come and go. So they are inevitable. Titikshasya Bharata. Just forbear it. Balad Swami gave me this instruction. <clears throat> well, I went to some other disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. I used to watch them. Even the householders whom Ramakrishna touched, they become golden. Their lives are completely transformed into a spiritual life. Very interesting, this Swami's conversation I just told you. It is, in brief, it is the preview of the book. So I thought that I have no time to translate it. So I am going this series of lectures so that they can, you can get what are the things will be in this book. Thank you very much. Matma me shuddhantam jyoti raham virjabi papma bhuyasam. Antaratma me shuddhantam jyoti raham virjabi papma bhuyasam. Paramatma me shuddhantam jyoti raham virjabi papma bhuyasam. Om shanti shanti shanti. May my body become pure. May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light and divine. May my mind become pure. May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light and divine. May my soul become pure. 
May I be free from impurities and ignorance. May I realize myself as the light divine. Om, peace, peace, peace be unquote.